All right, guys, I'm leaving the Home Depot. I came over here to pick up a couple little things I needed. And uh, I got called out. It's a good thing I came to town in my van. You know, I just had that feeling. I said, you know, I'm in the van. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's hot. I better go run to town in the van and just in case I get called out. And sure enough, I did. So I'm going to pull up right here and I got to go pick up one more thing inside. And then I figured I'd take y'all along with me on this call. So we'll see if we can find something interesting. All right, fellas, we just pulled up on our service call and look what we got. An almighty train. I can hear the fan. The fan's running, but the compressor's no, not running. So we might just have a capacitor out. So uh, let's, uh, let's, we're gonna dig into it and see. All right, well, it looks like it's gonna be a capacitor. These GE capacitors are really famous for going out. It's a 35.5, and you can tell it's just barely bulged. So we're gonna go ahead and check it. We're gonna go to common. The one-handed HVAC tech continues. Between them two. And we have nothing. Now the fan side should be good because the fan was running. So you see all that rust? See when they're rusty like that? Sometimes you have to scratch you spot out to where it can make contact or stick it in that hole right there and I tell you what I've been having some trouble with my old field piece meter okay well I don't know how the fan was running either because I've scratched me off a bunch of stuff and I'm going from common to fan and we don't have anything and we didn't have anything on the hermetic side either. So I've got my new capacitor. Which is a Gentec. 35.5. And you can just see the, size, the physical size is different. Mine's much longer. Skinnier. And if we check this one from. Common. Or hermetic to common. can see we have a 35 now if we go from fan to common should have five and we do so we'll mount this one in place wire it and this unit should fire okay we got the new capacitor mounted in place and because it was much skinnier you can see this is the original drill hole right here where my finger is when you run into a situation like that you have to adapt and overcome so I took a drill bit and drilled me a new hole and went right back into the factory hole but I'm not gonna cut this off I'm simply gonna bend it over just in case we change this capacitor again and we go back to another one that's fatter than this one you can reuse that one so that's how you want to play that so now we're gonna put the disconnect in and this unit should fire up all right, here's a disconnect. Let's see if she'll fire. Ooh, steel, no compressor. Not a good sign, I hope it's not out on thermal overload. All right guys, well, let me do some more investigating. Okay, I have my alligator clips on common and run. And the meter's on continuity and we have no tone, which means that we are in thermal overload and that compressor is hot to the touch. So we are going to water hose it until the meter tones. All right, it, it, I mean, it didn't take long at all. It took about less than a minute. And you hear the meter. That means the windings have closed and this compressor will now start. So we will hook the wires back up on the contactor and fire this sucker up. Okay, take two. Now let's see what will happen. 
Hey, that sounds better. Sounds like we got a little compressor action now. All right, so I'm gonna let this sucker roll for a few minutes and then while we're here, we're going, she said the indoor unit is pretty old. So we're gonna go in there and look at it, see what kind of metering device it's got. We're gonna put the testos on here and, and check the, her uh, refrigerant levels. All right, just to give you guys an idea where we're working, these are duplexes. You can see all the way down. Right down there, there's a bunch of condensers. You can see, look, look, look at that piece of junk right there. And you just keep going and going and going. And what it is, this is not rental property. The, the people actually own these things. They buy them and these are homeowners. There's our customer's carport and there's my van sitting right here. Um, Got the gauges on there, it's 90 degrees in that house. So I would expect the superheat to be very high, but that is a little too high to me. And my suction line's coming back at 88 degrees, but I'm gonna let it run a few minutes because it is very, very hot in that house. We'll do a target superheat, but I would say we're gonna have to end up adding a little bit. Um, the air handler is a train, but it's older than this one. This is a 2006. It's a, uh, see if y'all are getting that. 2TTB3048, that's 13 sear, four ton. Four tons inside, it's a 97 model air handler. But the air handler's in great shape. I just checked the coil, the coil is clean as a whistle. So we're gonna watch this for a couple more minutes. And, uh, probably end up adding a little bit. So let's see where it ends up. All right, my target superheat is 22. And that seems right to me because we, as hot as it is in that house, I would expect that suction pressure to be a lot higher. So I think we got ourselves a, a leaky coil here. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and juice her up for today. But I'm fixing to go inside and run the bloodhound. <laughs> Speaking of the bloodhound, Ralph, where's my damn sticker at? Just joking, buddy. Anyway, I'm gonna go run the leak detector and see if there's a leak in that coil. I'd say there's a leak. All right, guys, I just turned the thermostat back on. It's in delay, should be kicking on here in just a minute. As you saw with the H10, we found a leak. And after I turned the camp, the customer came walking around the corner, so I shut the camera off. After I shut the camera off, I kept, you know, searching the coil with the H10, and I found like three more. So it's leaking all over. Uh, gonna get her, gonna go ahead and price her an air handler because I have my Amanda price book with me. And uh, she'll probably just go that route. It's a 97, but. She said she'll, she'll, and said after I give her the price on the air handler, she'll think about it and or if it, there it goes kicking back on. Or she said if it's too expensive for her, she'll change just the coil. But she said she'll probably just go ahead and change the whole machine. So that's that's what this one's looking like, and it just kicked back on. And I'm gonna, I, I mean, I'm not gonna film this. Y'all seen this a hundred times. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and boost her up a little. I'm just going to juice her up a little bit with some Freon to keep her cool till I get in here. So. All right, y'all, another fun day in the world of a good old HVAC. Uh, I hope everybody has a good Labor Day, and I hope y'all get to relax. We'll see y'all on the next one.